Hey, this is the Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. There's another paid request, this time from Mr. Lehman. Thank you so much for that. Uh, request can be sent either directly to my PayPal or draw my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1964 film Zulu, which is a film I had heard quite a bit about and has Michael Caine. Now, Michael Caine had been in movies, but this was pretty much his first big starring role. And I think the story is, is that the director still wasn't sure on hiring him, but said, well, screw it, we don't have enough time, fine, I guess you're hired. Which is crazy, because a lot of people said he did a good job, as he did, and that really helped blemish his career. Well, blemish is the wrong word. Flourish. Flourish his career from then on. Just, I do like Michael Caine as an actor. Even the films that people deem as bad, I like The Swarm. I do. For a movie about killer bees, I thought it was pretty entertaining. You know, a big budget, big scope, epic film, but deal with killer bees. I actually find that kind of cool. With a pretty good score and a cast of familiar faces. I appreciate that much effort into a killer bee movie. That's what I mean. If you don't take any concept, do a full tilt. But he's at the he's pretty much the second star. The the main star is a guy named Stanley Baker. He's more the lead. But the it's based on in 1879 about 150 soldiers. Some are sick. Some are hurt. They're in this little fort, little hospital. They had to hold off 4,000 Zulu warriors in South Africa. Now, of course, you did go into... Is it weird making these soldiers seem heroic? Because, technically, were they the villains? Were they, was it the natives trying to fight for their independence? Like, we were fighting for our independence back in 1776. That's up to you how that's your boggle. I looked at it as just a story of this group of people, impossible odds, and somehow they're able to survive it. And in this type of battle, it's all about self-defense. And I don't want to die. My fr I don't want my friends to die, so I got to stand up for myself. Now, I'm sure there's some type of things that happen here that did not happen in real life. Like at the end, the Zulu warriors salute the soldiers. For what I understand, that didn't happen in real life. But I actually don't mind that addition because it brought a bit more nice emotional poignancy to the finale, which I'll get to. Uh, other people recognize there's a guy named James Booth who plays this guy named Private Hook, which in the film he's this drunk who could be, they, they call a thief, but he turns out to be a pretty decent kick-ass guy and help some folks. He was in Avenging Force of Michael Dukov, he was in a Shokasugi film, Pray for Death. I think he was in American Ninja 4, which that film sucked, but he was in that. He did a decent job here. And I appreciate the big scope, the use of the widescreen, the humongous amount of extras. You, you feel it's a big film. I mean, the opening is these two missionaries looking over the Zulu warriors as they're doing this marriage ceremony, which seemed like just hundreds, just hundreds of extras. It does have an epic feel to it, which you don't get a whole lot of that nowadays in terms of films. And even just the way the photography work, looks, which I prefer over photography today because it's either muted or you got stupid fucky filters or everything looks so crisp that it looks more, it looks less real than real life in a weird way. It's like it's too crystal clear. Like real life isn't that crystal clear. So it just looks more phony and fake than real. At least to me. There are exceptions, but like everything and Michael Caine you know has to deal with this other guy who's the leader of the camp and he's like oh well I guess there's such a thing as gifted amateurs we can cooperate 
and the guys out here will set a perimeter. And Michael Caine's like, what? You just want to wait here? So he's definitely got a bit of an attitude, but he still does his job fairly well. You know, telling him stuff, hey, when you take command, you're on your own. The first hour was a bit slow, I will say. The first hour was a bit dull to my liking. I did what I was trying to do to get to know a bit of the, about the soldiers, but it just seemed to like a lot of build-up. A lot of build-up. That I think a good... I think a good 20, 25 minutes could have been cut out. I really do. Like, it's over an hour until the battle finally begins. And... Even with that, you don't really get to know the characters a whole lot. I mean... There's one guy who likes to sing. There's Private Hook who's likes to drink. And there's this one sick guy who pisses him off. There's the two missionaries that ride to them. A father and daughter. And they're saying we should all leave. And the soldiers, mainly the, the Stanley... I keep forgetting his name. Stanley Baker saying no we have to stay. There's people here hurt. We can't move them. Also, this is our job. And the, the father, the missionary, gets drunk and trying to fuck with soldiers. Saying, you don't dive, you don't stay here. Until ultimately, finally, they say, then you two fuck off. Father tells him to fuck off. But it's just not the most exhilarating or interesting beginning. Again, I thought, man, for a film that's high, heavily praised, this first hour is kind of boring kind of slow I did I appreciate photography the acting is good I like Michael Caine the music's not too bad not too shabby it's just okay build up is fine but this is like I mean we're over an hour in and then that's like when the true movie begins and then when that happens I'm like okay this is actually pretty decent because you really get, you really do feel the insurmountable, insurmountable odds. There's kind of the British, the British version of the Alamo. Only some did survive. And I guess technically they did win. So it's like the Alamo, but not the Alamo. It's like the Alamo if we had won, I guess. And you really do feel, and that's one thing about the build-up that worked well, when they kept hearing this noise that sounded like a train, but instead it was the sound of 4,000 soldiers, Zulu warriors marching up to them. I can imagine this film getting canceled today because, oh my god, they're shooting the natives and the natives are acting like savages. Well, no, it's, it's war and... Again, the ending, I think, helps alleviate that as well, which you know, I'll get to. But then, that second hour, it's fairly intense. It's fairly intense where there's Stanley Baker set up all these different perimeters, and some's broken through, and you have hand-to-hand -hand combat with spears versus bayonets. Close combat. The soldiers have to use strategy in order to survive. So strategy versus insurmountable. Why do I never insurmountable? Blah, blah, blah. And you just really feel this tension of just how the hell are these guys going to make it out. And then they start, Zulu warriors start breaking to the hospital. And the hospital, some get attacked. Some are just making it out by the skin of their teeth. And you see a sense of bravery and courageousness. And especially in the inside close quarters, just how... They barely make it out alive and they have to get out of it. And that's when you finally get absorbed into the movie. And you just see this onslaught keep going. And there's little points of breaks. And oh my god, the, the Zulu warriors have the guns that they stole from the soldiers they got before. And like everywhere around them, they... <laughs> And for 1964, it's decently bloody. It's decently bloody. I would like to have seen 
a bit more of Michael Caine and such get a bit more into the fight. Granted, I know it's because they do get a bit, a little bit into it, to be fair. But I just want to see a bit more like Mel Gibson and the Patriot. Like, I want to see a little bit more of that down and dirty stuff. Because a lot of times it's okay, fire, they're commanding, which it'll you know, make sense for the time. But this is a part of me that just wanted to see them get their hands dirty a little bit more. It's not that they don't at all. It's just a little bit more Michael Caine and Stanley Baker's character. But, uh, but this is well shot. It's not the age of quick cuts and quick editing. And it shows how strategy can really pay off, especially at the end. And even after the battle where the Zulu warriors are doing this type of scening and Michael Caine thinks, oh, they're mocking us. And so, no, 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 they're saluting. They're saluting you, you guys, for your, your bravery. And then they leave. And yeah, I don't think that happened in real life, but it shows that, you know, the, the Zulu warriors are not just evil. It's just this was battle, this was war, this is what happened, and... You know, the warriors gave, hey, you guys are brave. You guys did what you needed to. We respect you. Not too bad, man. Not too bad. And then they leave. And they gave a little bit more humanity, a little bit more... Uh, just not stereotypical evil bad guys, if that makes sense. It made it a bit more, I don't want to go so far as thought-provoking, but a little bit more food for thought at the end. And you see that these guys, you know, for the the last hour of this movie, you know, went through, went through the shredder, so to speak. <laughs> And I would say Zulu is worth a watch for that. Again, the first half may be a bit too much of a build-up where you get a little bit antsy. Again, I do think there's 20, 25 minutes you could have edited out. I mean, to be honest, the whole... I mean, it's hard to say edit out because, you know, are you editing stuff out that really happened? But did it really happen or is it stuff that was embellish for a movie but the whole missionary stuff could have been cut out because there's another guy that knows how the zulu warriors work you didn't need anything with the missionary people because really it's just the guy talking out of his ass the guy saying you soldiers should leave which hell there was a bit of even within the soldiers should we stay are you sure we should stay but you could if you embellish other stuff, you embellish that with some soldiers, background soldiers going. I mean, if they have 150 soldiers, you have some unnamed soldier going. I don't know if we should stay here. Like, why are we just going? I do, soldier. Like, you could do that without the two missionaries. Because it is just one guy getting drunk. The daughter is saying, no, leave my dad alone. And then finally they're saying, you two didn't your wedding, you piss off. And then they leave. And then they don't come back, you don't see them again. So, you didn't even... You really didn't need the two missionary folks because at the end of the day, they didn't really mean anything to the story. And a few bits they did, again, you could have done that quicker with less padding in the first half, which is again, some soldiers doubting what their lieutenant, what their commanding officers are doing. And you don't have to name names. You just, again, if there's 150 soldiers, you just say, Whatever random soldier or two or three. So like I said, the first half you did add some stuff out, but the second half you had some decent intense battle, decent bloodshed. For, I did for 1964. Uh, the music, the the scope, the just amount of extras they had uh, definitely has an epic quality to it. I keep doing this because. It really does fill out the widescreen format. And overall it's worth a watch. If you like. And I could be a sucker for those type of movies. Assault 13. Even Aliens. Which yeah I put 
those two above this, but those siege type of movies. Where you have a group of people and this outside force, they seem like they just keep coming and coming and coming. And you're wondering, it's one of the reasons why I could watch Ghosts of Mars. John Carpenter, because... Although, I saw in Prison 13, the remake, I'm less a fan of. So there are exceptions. But for the most part, I, I, I could be a sucker for those siege type of movies. And this is one of those earlier examples of that. I didn't base on a true story. Again, how true is up to the historical fat toys that will know better than me. But like I said, I like the, the build-up. The part of the build-up that when they keep hearing these, these noises in the distance... I thought that sold the build up well enough that I didn't the you didn't need a full hour of other stuff to, to build it up to. But the second half was made it worth it. The second half, the second hour, this is over two hours long. That made it worth the watch. And while again the characters are not in depth. I couldn't tell you a whole lot about the the characters, but the actors did their jobs well. And again, Michael Caine, I'm a fan of. Not just from The Swarm. I even like The Island. That's another film people don't like, but I enjoyed. I mean, come on, it's Michael Caine did a 50 caliber shooting the shit out of pirates at the end. That's pretty cool. Because he did to like the naval ship. And he's like, well, fuck, I'm going to get this 50 caliber. Do, 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 do. Shoot the shit out of a bunch of pirates. That's pretty badass. That alone sold me on the movie. <laughs> So yeah, the island, the swarm. Uh, Beyond the Poseidon Adventure is there. It's not the worst thing I've seen, but it's not great. Uh, Michael King was in Jaws 4, which is, the movie sucks, but not because of him. He's one of the only decent parts of Jaws 4. He couldn't save it, but it was it was nice to see how he started off. And he was a good actor back then, too, so... Yeah, I do think it's worth a look. I think it's worth a look if you like Siege type of movies. Yeah. And at least the first half, it's a good looking cinematography wise. And at least the actors do their jobs well. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.